Welcome back to another episode of Tips and Tricks with your favorite destination coach, Danielle Shelton. Today, I have Mr. Jonathan O'Mara. How are you doing, Jonathan? I'm very well. Appreciate you having me today, Danielle. All right, no problem. So what is it that you do? Tell the people what you do so we can get these good tips in. Yeah, um, you know, in the business world, they, they have all these fancy titles, but to sum it up, I'm a revenue cycle management specialist, uh, background detailing in the financial sector. Okay. All right. So for those of us who that just sounded like something that really smart people say, <laughs> <laughs> dumb it down for me. So what is it that you do on a, the dumbed down version of it? So I, I, I work for a large uh, tech company that also offers uh, financial um, advising um, on their practices. So uh, usually hospitally, we're from between hospital-based physicians uh, to your ABA mental health providers. Uh, we deal with the financial spectrum of their business, right? So they can have more time freed up to deal with patients. Oh, okay. Look, see, you had to make it make, I was like, okay, that sounds good, Jonathan, but you know, <laughs> I need, I needed a little bit more. All right. So here on Tips and Tricks, I always like to have my experts clue us in on, on what it is that we can do. And you are on the Money Matters segment of the show. So give us some tips or tricks that we can use um, in our life or just in our business? What is it you can help us with? Sure. Well, you know, a lot of businesses uh, didn't take it, especially in the um, urban and uh, uh, our, our black and brown communities, right? Is education and knowledge, right? So uh, the advice I would give is make sure you do enough education and build your knowledge on how you're going to structure finances, right? Um, not burn through your cash flow rather than using a lot of your institutional banks in order to suppress a lot of your cash cash flow spending, right? Okay. Um, you all put yourself on a very strategic budget, right? We all have budgets that we have on our in home. You don't put yourself on a budget in your business, you're going to be at risk of that uphill battle that all businesses fall into. Okay. And what can you say about the, the, not just the Gen Z, but the millennials, because there's this up wave of like, just go out and just start a business and you don't have to worry about finances and you don't have to worry about money and you don't have to worry about having a plan, just start a business and ask for a loan. So how can, how can you help the millennials in the Gen Z, uh, not just go ask a bank for a loan and get a lot of money with no plan? Well, you want to set yourself up on a very strategic business plan, right? A lot of, you know, 40% of the household businesses, right? Small businesses are usually businesses started up because they had a nine to five and they're moving the money from their nine to five, whatever extra that they can through this new venture, right? right. And once the venture, venture starts bringing in enough profit where they foresee can move them out of their nine to five, then they generally use that as their only methods of income, right? The problem is with these new millennials is they jump right out because we live in a state where you can open up as many tax IDs, as yes. many LLCs, and you have what these middlemen, tax preparation services who tell people, oh, open an LLC. Why do they ask you to do that? Because they do what's called a Schedule C. Mm. They know you have a nine to five and you open up your LLC, you can use your Schedule C to move expenses through it, right? There's okay. pros and cons of that, right? Because a lot of us as Americans, we get older and we want to own houses, own our own properties, want to buy vehicles, right? right? And we're learning the bad way of doing that and learning about debt to income ratio when it's too late. So the advice I would give to millennials now is really respect your elders and the fact that we have that pre-sense notion of knowledge to give to you to say, don't do it this way, do it that way. Right. Mm -hmm. um, if us as parents, uh, guardians, um, family members can touch at least one of these young people 
right you know, family cookouts and whatnot to give them the knowledge so they know not to do it i think that'll make a difference um by leading with example right yes and i think that would make such a huge impact if we were able to turn around and say you know what i did this business and let me give you some pointers the problem is in well I'm not going to say the problem. The challenge <laughs> with some of the Gen Z is that they have been told that, oh, that's the old way to do things and you don't have to, you know, do it the old way. And there's a much faster way to get to the money and everybody wants to skip over the process. And for me, one of the things that I find myself saying over and over again is you cannot skip the middle. Like they want to start at the beginning and then go to the end, but there's a middle. And like the process part of it seems to be a real struggle for our Gen Z population. Like they don't like the process part. They just want to get, get there. And in terms of finances, you have to have a plan, right? That's what you're saying. Build your knowledge. So process, educate yourself, process, have a business plan, process, you know, so that you can be successful. And then you have success at the end, but all the middle of that is process. So if you had like one thing you could tell a Gen Z, what would it be to help them get through the process? To trust them. Mm. If, if you look at anything that people are great at, right? There's all the process it goes through, right? The reason why these Gen Zs and all of these younger uh, ladies and gentlemen what they what they're looking at is instant gratification. Social yes. media is that perfect example, right? You're seeing the good, but you're missing the work ethic in between where they got the good, right? You see a BMW, but how do you obtain a BMW, right? Uh, the biggest thing that they have to do is trust in those same processes that you would do anything else. You got to wait four years to get your degree, right? You got to wait for you got to wait. You know, uh, you have to wait in line in order to be able to take your order next, right? So you trust that process. You don't go into McDonald's and just walk around the line and say, hey, I want to order number one. Right. There's a process, right? Um, in order to get the faster process, you need to make sure you're educated enough so if you do do that fast process, you don't fall flat on your face. I think uh, as older peers, we don't allow these kids to fall on their face. So we can, I told so. That's a whole other. That's a whole other show. That's whole. <laughs> that's a whole other you're show. Not, we're not, afraid not. to let them fall. We're afraid to let them fall. So we we baby them. We gotta stop babying them. And this is teachers. This is higher. This goes way up. Stop babying them because that they're only seeing the easy way because of social media. And right now, we're moving away from an age where reading is not power anymore. We got away from. Mm. That. I read if I can pull it up on my phone, right? right? Why have somebody educate me and talk to me when I can pull it up on my phone? Banking is like that, right? When you go into a bank, you see the nice desk, but nobody asks about the one sitting in the glass office not doing absolutely nothing. Right. To go in there, to get the conversation with that person that leads to, hey, this is what you should be structuring your money and your business is doing. Not the person sitting at the bank, not the bank tellers. Yes. Right. And them just changing that narrative, right? Is all they need if you want to get it the quick way. Is there a quick way legally and obtainably? Yes, mm -hmm. there is. But if you don't know it, what we're saying is foreign to anybody in the financial sector, right? So one thing you want to make sure they do is understand the ability of finances and how the banks can help you rather than hurt you right but right. making smart decisions rather than the instant gratification right getting the bag you want to get the bag guess what scrooge mcduck swims in his money because it's locked away in what a bank right <laughs> you, you need the you need the bank right yeah and you know uh just again that ties in education cash flow stop burning your cash flow right use the bank's money right it's, it's always better to use somebody else's money than your own mm -hmm. okay now save and plan don't spend profits you spend profits you're losing the value of your business right, right? but you what know that's what? like that's street knowledge 
That's it. You you and don't you, said it just <laughs> you don't spend your profit. <laughs> exactly. You never spend your profit. I tell people they watch. I said, you watch Power? I says, yeah. Why do you think he opened the club? Right. So watch it through with it. What do you think banking is? It's the same difference, right? If you don't structure yourself, dumb it down for those people. Dumb it down for this generation. Uh, I, I know you're an educator. I know you have found lots of ways to educate people in today's knowledge, right? Right. We got to use it to our advantage. Use social media to its advantage, right? Make them think outside of the box. And wow, he got a BMW and he's old, younger than me. Well, won't you write an ass money? You got to be that BMW. Right. Yeah, I, you know what? I think I really have started to really catch wind of the process because what's different is if these kids miss the process they go into full-blown breakdown like their failures to them aren't stepping stones their failures to them is like that's the end of the world and they don't look at their failures like this is what you're this is a lesson and you learn from this and then you step on top of that and then the next failure is the next lesson and you step on top of that because it's a process but they want to skip over the process. So I appreciate, you know, you coming in, you telling them, educate yourself, build your knowledge, have structure, trust the process, budget, make sure you have a business plan and change the financial narrative um, in your life because that it matters how you manage your money. So with that said, we are going to close out Tips and Tricks do you have any last words for us, Jonathan? Anything in particular? Any last words? If you if you are starting a business and you're looking to grow, I say write down the three I's. What are the three I's? Intelligence, right? Your intelligence is your biggest weapon when trying to convince any financial institution that they should invest in you. Second, initiative. Hmm. How you, that initiative is set by the expectation that you have for not only yourself, but what you're going to do with investors' money. And then the last part is integrity. You never want to lose integrity. Those three eyes are the most important things and what banks look at in, in someone they want to invest in. Wow. Okay. So intelligence, initiative, integrity. We're going to close out on that, guys. This has been another episode of Tips and Tricks with your favorite destination coach, Danielle Shelton, and your money matters expert, Jonathan O'Mara. See you guys later. Mm -hmm.